Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite mid-range guitars of 2022. <laughs> Now there were so many amazing mid-range guitars released in 2022, but here's a handful that left a lasting impression on me. And when we consider things like price, playability, weight and ergonomics, tone, versatility, all of those things, here's the guitars that I think were the best of 2022. Now it should go without saying, none of the manufacturers listed in this video know I'm doing this video or listing them in any way. These are just guitars that have come through the studio in 2022. I have hands-on experience with them, so it's not just a list of, hey, here's some cool guitars, hopefully they're good. These are ones I've used extensively and I think offer a good value to players. So here we go, let's jump into the list. So here we go, in no particular order, here are my mid-range guitars of the year. Number one, PRS SE Silver Sky. Now I was pretty skeptical about this guitar. I thought, well, in a sea of strats, what is this guitar gonna bring that's a little bit different? And yet I kept reaching for it over like my player series Stratocaster. And I did a comparison video, you know, comparing tone, features, price, all that kind of stuff. And the PRS SE, checked off a lot of those boxes in terms of price, in terms of overall construction, in terms of you know tone and versatility and all that kind of stuff, it definitely sounded different than the player strat, which is kind of like you know in that same price tier. So I kept reaching for it and I think uh, what it came down to was the neck profile was so beautiful on that guitar. Um, the tone was a little bit huskier and thicker, so it brought something different to the table. Construction was exquisite on that guitar, uh, other than a few weaknesses that I thought the plastics were pretty cheap on the headstock. But other than that, the rest of the guitar felt very premium for an SE guitar. And yeah, I just kept reaching for it, and that's a good sign. That means the guitar made an impression on me. You know, it's modeled after those 50s and 60s Stratocasters, so it definitely had a little bit different feel with that vintage radius and all that kind of stuff. Fretwork was very good on it. So playability, balance, all that kind of stuff. Check, check, check. Great guitar. Um, and yeah, one of my mid-range guitars of the year. All right, the second guitar that really made an impression on me, and so I'm nominating it for mid-range guitar of the year 2022, was the Yamaha Revstar. An unexpected pick, but they revamped the entire Revstar lineup for 2022, and Yamaha kind of got their crap together. I've always been a big fan of the Pacifica series, and those Revstars left a big impression on me. So they finally got their three tiers separated, so high-end Japanese Revstars, um, the mid-range ones, which I played, and then they have a lower entry-level tier as well, which I didn't try. But those mid-range guitars were very, very good. In terms of all those qualifications I talked about, they checked off all the list, they brought something completely different to the table in a sea of, you know, Strats, Tellies, Les Pauls, all those kind of things. It was just completely different. And yeah, left a big impression on me in terms of quality control. Like I played on those and I'm like, they feel like a really high-end guitar and they're like 800 bucks. So yeah, really great guitars. Definitely have their own thing going on. Sound great, feel great, look amazing. So that's why they're on my list. Number three on my list of mid-range guitars of the year kind of pushes the price boundary up a little bit. These are $899, and I kind of wanted to keep these mid-range guitars from like $500 to, you know, $800 in that range. But this guitar offers a ton of value, and I keep reaching for it to play time and time again, which means it's leaving a lasting impression on me. This is the Shiji TM5. Now, this guitar, the spec list is just insane on it. Locking tuners, bone nut, Roasted maple and quarter sawn neck, splittable humbuckers, two point trim, brass trim block, just on and on in these really cool gradient finishes and stuff like that. And the quality control on these guitars rivals things like two or three times its price. That's why I kind of added it to my, you know, guitars of the year because it is kind of like, well, it's $899, it's pretty expensive, but you could buy a $2,000 guitar and not get that same attention to detail. And they've proven it over the last, you know, five, six, seven years that they can do that year after year, time after time. So even though, you know, Shiji isn't really a household name, uh, when I played on that guitar, I'm like, wow, this thing is legit. It's an amazing guitar. So yes, 
It's got modern looks, great gradient finishes, you know, quilted tops, that kind of stuff. And it backs it up with playability, with ergonomics, with insane value, that kind of stuff. So yeah, this guitar is leaving an awesome impression on me and that's why it's on the list. Now in early 2022, I kicked off the year featuring a series of guitars I had never heard of before and obviously had never played on, but they left a lasting impression on me. These guitars were insane value for money, great construction, interesting tones. They wound their own pickups in their own factory where they made their own guitar, so no outsourcing. They have their own facilities. And yeah, that value, the quality control just blew me away. I'm like, how can that guitar be that price? And of course, I'm talking about Sire guitars. And in particular, love the H7, love the T7, uh, but all the guitars, the S7, the L7, they're all amazing guitars. And yeah, the things that set them apart is the playability. You know, you play on these guitars and you're like, this should not be like $500 or you know, the ones with the flame tops, I think go up to 650, something like that. In that range, you play on this and you're like, this is so sublime. Like the way they rolled the fingerboard edges, the, the fret ed treatments, you only find on like, you know, $2,500 guitars. I don't know how they're doing it there. Um, and they're still popular to the point where they're still hard to find. So yeah, these are amazing guitars. And I could just put the whole Sire series on my list of mid-range guitars of the year. They're all that good. But yeah, I love the, the S7, the T7. They're all really, really nice. Now word on the street is that Sire is introducing an entry level series. And if they're anything like their main series, I think we're all in for a great treat because you know, if they can produce a high quality guitar in that three to $400 range, uh, man, that would be amazing. Mid-range guitar of the year number five definitely left a lasting impression on me. It is the Blue Lava. There's simply nothing else like it on the market. You know, it's an acoustic guitar, it's got internal speakers, so you can use, you know, effects, looping, you know, metronome, recording all your clips and ideas instantly, all in a user face that is dead simple and just simply makes sense. You know, you look at all those things and you're like, well, I don't know if I can navigate, you know, recording and looping and playing over backing tracks and, you know, practicing scales over my own rhythm tracks. It sounds too complex. It's not. Like the way they laid that out is so simple. Anybody, even if you don't like technology, can enjoy it. And I think uh, new players, whether young or old, would instantly just be hooked and addicted to playing that guitar. And in the end, that's what it's all about, you know, sharing the love of music and playing the guitar. So I think that one definitely would, you know, hook players. And like I said, there's other guitars that have like, you know, the internal speakers and all that kind of stuff and, and delay and chorus and whatever effects, but nobody, you know, has ever done it so simply, so beautifully and executed the UI in a way that you don't even need an instruction book. You just use the touch screen. So giant touch screen on it, very easy to use. And I love that Lava brought the, the high end features down onto, you know, the more affordable blue. It's not carbon fiber like the high end ones, but it's HPL, which is kind of like a man-made material that should be, you know, fairly durable as well. So yeah, that guitar definitely made me turn my head and be like, wow, what these guys have done is just something totally, you know, different. So love that guitar. That's on the list. So we've got the PRS SE Silver Sky, we've got Yamaha Revstar, we've got Shiji, we've got Sire, we've got Blue Lava. All of these guitars left a huge impact on me in 2022. And like I said, would be a good shout if you're looking for a particular instrument. I'm gonna end with number six, coming full circle. It's another PRS SE. This one is the Starla. Not necessarily a guitar that I would find myself being drawn to, but when I played it, I'm like, this is an amazing <laughs> instrument. And it brings something completely different to the PRS lineup. You know, all the, the custom 24s and the Paul's guitars and all those. I featured a ton of PRS guitars, core model and SEs uh, on this channel over, you know, many, many years. But this one is completely different. It has a much more traditional take on that single cut guitar, but it definitely has its own thing going on. The pickups sound great. They're brash and big and bold and much more aggressive than your typical uh, PRS, which tends to be, you know, like pretty smooth sounding. This one's like a little bit more aggressive. Uh, it's got a thinner body, but it still balances really nice. There's no headstock dive. 
Um, and it's just got all that PRS SE goodness, you know, in terms of the design of the headstock and all that kind of stuff. It holds tune really well. And again, it's unique in the lineup because it's got that stop tail piece and tunematic bridge, which, you know, there's not a lot of PRS guitars that feature that. So it's much more traditional in the lineup. It's got awesome tones and it's not something I ever thought would be on my list, but I'm like, I love playing that guitar. It's really, really cool. It's got its own vibe. Um, so yeah, some some different guitars on that list for sure. Not just you know your neck, your typical Strats and Tellys, which we know we all love. You know the the classic vibe could easily be on you know this list, but these are just the ones in 2022. So I wanted to kind of keep it more focused. But so many amazing guitars could have been on that list. But these were the ones I just found myself you know reaching for, wanting to play, and I think offer some really good value in terms of features and those you know criteria I listed off the top. So I'll be back next week with my ultimate list for 2022. No price restrictions. So these will be the best guitars of 2022, regardless of price. But I wanted to start off with my favorite mid-range guitars because I know when people are looking for instruments, number one, they don't want to overpay and they want to get good features for their money. And uh, yeah, those mid-range guitars kind of sit in that sweet zone that offer really high quality and lifetime guitars um, without spending a ton of money. But if you want to see the best of the best, uh, tune in next week. We'll have that video for you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so. Other than that, I'll link to all the guitars uh, that I talked about in this video so you can get pricing and specs for your area. Um, and we'll go from there. Other than that, have yourself a great week. Take care.